I remember this house as a little kid driving by on the school bus and looking out of the window and just dreaming about the, the castle that was surrounded by the parking lot. Prince Edward County is an island along the north shore of Lake Ontario. Because it's an island, it's remained largely undisturbed. It is as it was for the most part. So you have lots of significant buildings that are all reflective of our, our history and our heritage. Much of the architecture is still intact, but it's endangered, I would say. In Picton, uh, there was an old church, an 1875 Methodist church on our main street that had a huge tower. It was really iconic. And one day, bulldozers and cranes came in and took that building down. So it was a horrific thing. All of us came and gathered to watch this great old church go down. I just think it's unfortunate that traditionally our view has been what's the cheapest, fastest, easiest thing to do. And that has always been, uh, let's just tear it down, save money and have parking. Well, the Downs House is, is really a unique house in Prince Edward County. It's kind of a holdout from another time period, the 1850s. Everything around it has sort of taken up some of the property. We have a mall next door to it with just your parking lot and your fast food places and things like that. In the front of it, in the front yard, it has a, a Bank of Montreal. So it's been swallowed up, almost inhaled by urban development. Sometimes you're looking at buildings and it's like a death watch, you know. I had the same feeling about the Downs House that I did about the old church. The, the church uh, just across the street from here was demolished. For me, I think that was the straw that broke the camel's back because we've lost a lot of amazing buildings to progress. And I think we need to put a little bit more effort into saving some of these buildings. I grew up here. If I could choose anywhere else to live, I don't think I would want to live anywhere else. It's a place that really allows you to dream and dream big. My parents discovered Prince Edward County just by chance. They were looking for real estate and they drove through the village of Bloomfield and saw this old house with a motel and my mom said, that's what I want, I want something like that. They met the owners who happened to be German and the, uh, our family is from the German side of Switzerland and they started a conversation. And two weeks later, we moved into what is now Angeline's Inn. When they opened the restaurant, it was uh, the first fine dining restaurant in the area. And uh, I think a lot of people believe that they were crazy. My mom was front of house, my, my dad was in the kitchen and they had a young family. I think it's really interesting that my parents, as immigrants to Canada, decided to take on a pretty iconic style of building in Prince Edward County and uh, decided to restore it. And um, that really um, set the foundation for, I think, the path that I'm on right now. I was always drawn to the Settler's Dream, which is a documentation of a lot of the old buildings in Prince Edward County. That's actually how I learned to read. Uh, so as a kid, I would go through the book. I would learn about each building, who built it. Because we are immigrants to Canada, as a kid, I used the settler's dream in learning about the history of the families and learning about the way they lived and the environments that they created for themselves. In some ways, I created family out of 
the characters of the people that lived in the houses. And it's through these built environments and through the people that created them that I feel most connected to this area. And these are drawings that I did when I was 10 or 13 years old. So from a really early age, I uh, was always interested in historic buildings. When you look at a lot of old buildings, it really allows you to dream and, and um, get caught up in that romanticism behind it. This property was purchased by Captain John Pepper Downs in the late 1850s. It started off as a stone Regency cottage constructed out of limestone. It would have been exposed. When John Pepper Downs bought it, he did a big Tudor Elizabethan renovation to it. He added the front vestibule, the large dormer across the entire length of the building. And then the Faulkner family have owned this house since the 1930s. JB and Winnie Faulkner had one son, who Thera Meineker, who became Thera Faulkner, married. There's two versions of the story. The first version is that uh, this, her husband went out for a pack of cigarettes and didn't come back. The second version, the local version, is that he was involved in a bank robbery in Belleville and uh, fled to Central America. Her in-laws took pity on her, they took care of her, and then eventually when they became older, she took care of them. And when J.B. Faulkner passed away, everyone expected their son to come back and, and claim the estate, but he never showed up. And so uh, Thera inherited everything. Thera was my husband's aunt. She was just a very kind, gentle soul. She had a great sense of humor, and she liked having fun and doing things. She, she was very well liked by her family and by the community. She was very lovely. Thera was known in the community for having antique stores and a jewelry store, and it was known as House of Faulkner. She was a bit of a hoarder. There were only small pathways through this entire house. It was just jammed full of things. And uh, the room that we're in right now actually was her collection room. And this was where she kept all of her best things. My husband's aunt didn't have children of her own. And so all the nieces and nephews were very cherished by her. So he spent a lot of happy times in this house and was very close to his aunt. In later years, he was pretty keen to have the house passed to him, which in the end it did. He just had so many plans for this house. He was just so emotionally attached to the whole building, but he was diagnosed with cancer in the middle of coming up with ideas for what he was going to do with this house as the cancer progressed and he realized that it was going to be terminal, it, of course, we wanted to sell the house. They decided to put up the house for auction and Paul ended up passing away a, a few days before the auction ever happened. And I didn't attend the auction because I was too sad and I thought for sure that the plaza or another corporation would come in and, and buy the property and then demolish it and that would be the end of it. I was so worried that it was going to get sold to somebody who might tear it down. I remember after the funeral, asking around about the house, if it had sold at the, the auction, and um, people said that the reserve hadn't been met. I reached out to Marilyn. She said, make an offer. So we went back and forth for a little while. And then I just said, you know, if no one comes back to you with an offer, this is still on the table. And she called me a month later. And that's how I ended up with this massive house in the middle of Picton in the dead of winter, uh, which was a complete surprise. I didn't think it was going to happen. And uh, that's where my story starts with this house. When Alex came along with an offer for the house, it just was wonderful because both of us already knew Alex. He had been in the house while we owned it. So we knew that he would put such tender, loving care into restoration, and I was very happy to sell it to him, knowing that he wouldn't tear it down.
It's so great that Alex did come forward without that intervention of him at that time. I don't think we'd be talking about the Downs House today as anything more than a memory. The Meinecker Falconer family, they had their time in this house and lots of happy memories, and now the house passes to somebody else. And so it's, you know, it's up to him to do what he wants to do with it. And I think everybody's just excited that he's doing things. I feel really lucky that I can do so many different things around here. Uh, it really, sometimes I can be a little bit all over the place with my um, projects and goals, but I think my personality really suits this area because that's kind of how it works around here. You could say one of my favorite pastimes is trespassing. A lot of the buildings have been moved here at some point. The log house, we think, came from, was closer to the water, and then at some point they moved it here. I happened to stumble across this log cabin from the 1860s, white cedar, that opened the door to me talking to the family and asking if they would be willing to sell this building to me. And they said, yeah, sure, we'll sell it to you. And so I stripped back this house cataloged the whole thing, brought it to our property in Bloomfield and reassembled it. And now we've made it into a new suite and additional accommodation. So that was my first major deconstruction and reconstruction. Once we were finished that, we brought over the little 1880s cabin and uh, have now made it into a little tuck shop. Preservation doesn't mean keeping everything, period, but it's about being sympathetic and using spaces in new ways and incorporating modern design with them. So it's about giving, giving old places new life. With House of Faulkner, the vision is constantly evolving. The main thing is to preserve as much of the fabric of the building as possible and then kind of let the interests guide its function. This house has been a mystery to so many people for such a long time and I think it has such a rich story that I wanted to make that accessible to uh, the public. In February I was giving tours of the house and some artist friends had said wow these would be amazing studio spaces and then I thought well why not? So I started to rent out each of the rooms to different artists for pop-up shops and studios and it's worked out really well. It, it's been fun to offer these spaces at reasonable prices to the creative community um, and see what they come up with. We've held several events at the house, performances, art openings. We have a really vibrant creative community out here and I feel really lucky that I can be very creative in this community and I feel very supported by the community. So um, I feel like in a very small way, this is me offering what I was offered to them. What's cheering about it to me is that you have young people like Alex uh, who are gonna come forward and say, well, I'll intervene because I, I believe in history, but I, there's a business here and I've got enough years left, um, enough miles on the tires here to go that I can say, it's worth the investment to me, and I will come up with these ideas. What Alex does with his building is not just about one building, really. It's, it's about a model that we can develop. And can we encourage that more and more? Because I, I don't see another solution other than that one. There are other ways to deal with older buildings than just tearing them down and creating plazas. And that's what I want to show people is that you can, you can use what's already existing and create really interesting and unique spaces. The only way for us to really see change in a positive light is to be a part of it. <laughs>